So I guess let's get into the meat of this. I guess I'm gonna gonna talk about Godzilla um, singular point. And I messaged my friend Lucas, who's also a Godzilla fan, been on the show several times. And he, I all I said to him was J- Jaguar's back, <laughs> which of course fits that style of anime, you know. And and I'm not a fan of anime. Um. I'm not a fan whatsoever, and I've gone into reasons why in the past and in other live streams. But Jet Jaguar would work in 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 an anime because anime is always so so over the top and so crazy that of course he would work in something like this. And and uh, the art style of this anime is clearly very. Um, over the top in 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 many ways where everything's very vibrant very colorful which is in sharp contrast to the anime Godzilla films which were very monocolored very you know their color palette was very muted well if you look at this you get bright reds and so on and so forth and and everything like that. So of course Jet Jaguar is going to work. How that how he fits into the plot, what the plot is and everything like that. I have no idea what's going to happen. Uh I am really looking forward to it just because one because it's Godzilla and I'm going to watch everything Godzilla related, but two um it's definitely not going to be the anime Godzilla trilogy. And I'm not saying that as a middle finger to the Godzilla anime trilogy because again, I don't hate it as much as a lot of people hate it, but I don't like it either. Um, but the, this is definitely looks like a new take on what's going on. And a lot of that I give the Japanese props for, you know, you know, say what you will, whether or not it's a good, good thing or, or not say what you will. The Jap, I like how the Japanese have been taking risks with their Godzillas and trying to tell somewhat new stories with it. Like you can't deny that the, the anime Godzilla trilogy had a new thing to say, had like had brought a whole new world to Godzilla, which is my biggest compliment with it. Shin Godzilla certainly was was taking a new direction with Godzilla while trying to retain some of the nostalgia that we have for it and so on and so forth. And I really liked it and and, and everything. This it definitely looks like it has a new take uh, on it. Even even the art style. Um, I don't know. It looks typical anime, but yet it looks slightly retro, and I'm okay with that. Uh, I like how they're really going 2D on a lot of things. But the big thing that you've got to point out are the monster designs. And clearly what they're going for is... They're going very dinosaurian with these kaiju designs, which is fine. Absolutely fine. I, I won't lie. I'm not a fan of the Rodan design. But it will probably work in context of the anime with what, what they're doing. I mean, you, on the surface, I don't like the Shin Godzilla design whatsoever. But it works extremely well within the movie. So that's probably what's going to happen here. In fact, Rodan was the only monster that I really had a hard time. Oh, no, I take that back. Titanosaurus. We're pretty sure that's Titanosaurus. Ugh. Um, I mean, I mean, of course, if you're going to make him an aquatic dinosaur, you would make him that kind of dinosaur, you know. That fits. But they are clearly going very dinosaurian with it, which makes me wonder what Godzilla is going to look like. Because the promo art is different than what the trailer kind of showed with his face and what's kind of above me. Um, he does have a Joker smile. I find that interesting, but whatever. Um, that's fine. It looks great. It, it does. It looks like it's going to be fun in the very least. Um, so I'm, I am kind of looking forward to it. It wouldn't surprise me if this anime turns out to be kind of like Godzilla Final Wars in a lot of ways, where it's just balls to the wall crazy and things are always happening. It's not going to be like the Godzilla anime trilogy where it's very slow, uh, very meandering and the action is going to be very slow now in this one it looks like it's going to be absolutely apeshit insane love the gabara design the gabara design looks fantastic and an interesting take i wonder how they're gonna weave him in there are they going to keep his sort of dreamlike origins the same or are they going to just completely reinvent it and make him a 
a you know a, a, another giant monster. Who knows? Ebera's in it. I'm not sure if I saw Amanda in it or not, but I could be completely wrong. Yeah, the original one, yeah, the original design of Titanosaurus, Justin, definitely does kind of look like a seahorse. But yeah, no, because because Titanosaurus is an aquatic dinosaur, um, I know that, the, the, I understand their mentality, the, the artist's mentality of this particular design. And I'm okay with it. Uh, definitely not what I would do. How you guys have seen the poster for My Godzilla vs. Titanosaurus, the book. Uh, but it will probably work out great in this show. It probably will look out great. I'm certainly looking forward to it. I'm certainly looking forward to it. I think it will, in in the very least, be an extremely entertaining show uh, where things are just kind of badass and crazy, and that's okay. That's absolutely okay. As long as the show knows what it wants to be and follows through with it, I'm sure I will like it as well. You see, that that's the key. Angerus looks even more like an Ankylosaurus than he ever seen before. Yeah. And and on the surface, you look at that design, and I'm kind of like, ugh, that's really over the top. But of course it is. It's an anime. Anime, of course, heightens everything visually to the point that it kind of drives me crazy in, in a lot of shows. But um, so, so, of course, it would kind of look... He would kind of look like that. Well, if I saw that design live action, I probably would have more of a problem with it. But because it's not live action, it's in an animated series, I'm okay with it. I really am. Even Rodan. You know, you just heard my spiel about Rodan. But but even that, I, I, I was finding myself saying, okay, okay, I'm on board. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay with this. Now, something that I really... Want it because everyone's talking about the designs and and everything like that. I'm going to take another swig. Uh, we're talking about the designs and everything like that for for the anime Godzilla, you know, Godzilla Singular Point. Which what the Singular Point mean? Uh, everyone's sort of guessing that what what it basically is talking about is Godzilla is the catalyst for everything that's happening. I don't know. They'll definitely make it known why it's called Singular Point. I am curious about it. That's that's for damn sure. But. Uh, something <laughs> that people haven't really been talking about is the music for this teaser trailer. I love it. <laughs> In fact, it was one of the things that really drove me into checking out the, the being excited for it is I love the, the music for it. The teaser trailer, of course, as I said before, that's the same thing that a lot of the teaser trailers did for, for Shin Godzilla, where it was just a clip of music from the movie with visuals of within a movie. No dialogue, no anything to really explain what's going on, just to sort of get you hyped visually uh, for, the f for the film. Uh, Singular Point did very much so the same thing. And I, I was hooked. I was hooked. Have not heard anything that this composer has written before. I, I literally had not heard of anything that this this composer had had written before until I, I looked him up. Yeah, Ken, Ken Sawada, I think his name is. Let me... Yeah, Ken Sawada. Um, he, and, and he did the music for the live-action adaptation of Grave of the Fireflies, which I like. I mean, I prefer the, anime, the animated movie, for sure. But I I really enjoyed the live action version. Definitely a different take on Grave of the Fireflies, and he did the music for that, and the music was great. Have not heard anything else. He's apparently a big game composer and an anime. He he's done several animes, so he is at least familiar with the genre. And I really liked that music. It it was very simple. You know, it wasn't it wasn't anything crazy. I love the horns that that began on it. It was very reminiscent of Ifakube, and and to me, you can't deny that because Ifakube was the one that really kind of brought home the fact that we're gonna use these brass instruments and just blare them into the microphone for for kaiju themes and giant monster stuff and making things look and sound bigger. I mean, he was the one that really revolutionized that. You, you can't convince me otherwise. Uh, but 
he, or I should say perfected that, not necessarily revolutionized that. But I, I loved how it opens with that, and it, it felt very Ifakube-esque, as you see what looks like Godzilla powering up his atomic breath. Now, I, I noted that they kept the purple color uh, from Shin Godzilla. Actually, you know, I'm not sure if that is Godzilla. It's it's presented as if it is Godzilla. It could be something else, but it's presented as it is Godzilla. As if it is Godzilla, I should say. So interesting that they kept Hideaki Anno's purple atomic breath. Interesting that they that they uh, that they did with that. But anyways, I I was hooked as soon as I heard that music, and of course they would open with that music to really catch your attention, and then it gets into the the faster strings, the sort of ostinato esque music afterwards. Very reminiscent of Ifakube, without sounding like Ifakube, and and I and I and I like that. Yes, Justin, I completely agree with you. Uh, I'm, I'm not I'm not glancing over you, Shay. I promise. Um, the thing which has the me the most curious is the red mist we see around Godzilla and the flock of juvenile Rodans. Yeah, that looks really interesting. Really interesting. I kind of I kind of like that stuff, you know. And, and again, this is one reason why I'm liking the Reiwa era. You know, 